Hey, it's Paul Solt from Super Easy Apps. I want to show you how to get started with making it so that we can run our iPhone without this connector down here. So let's go ahead and get that set up. You're going to go to your window and then you're going to go to devices and simulators. Once you do that, there's a new option in Xcode for any iPhone that you have connected. So what you can do is you can just look at this option and connect via network. That's going to allow you to install apps without actually having to plug it in. That's also going to bring up your Apple Watch if you have that connected so that you can get that going as well. All right, so let's close out of this and let's test to see if we can start this app without this cable. So I'm going to unplug it. And Xcode is going to warn me that it was disconnected. You can see that we're no longer connected. And I do have the Wi-Fi on right now, so that should be enough to connect to it. If we go into Xcode, what we're going to see is eventually Xcode will update. It doesn't always do it like right away, but it's within maybe 10 seconds. You'll see this little network icon. That means that it's connected over the network instead of a cable. If you don't see this icon, that means it's plugged directly into Xcode. So if we do that, we can start up the app. Let's just make one little change to our UI. Let us, why don't we change the background color? So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab the background. Let's make it red just for fun. And let's hit the play button. And what we should see is that this screen is going to change to red. So we can see the app down there. It just launched. We're seeing the launch screen right now. And now we see the actual app. So that's how to get started. That's how to make your app work on your device. So now that we don't need our cable. We can just do our development without plugging in. However, you will find it useful to have your cable there if you're doing a lot of development because then your iPhone's gonna lose its battery. So you'll have no charge at the end of the day if you're doing a lot of programming and testing different apps and the screen's always on. So it is good to plug this in, but it is super helpful when you're testing multiple devices. So if you have an iPad or if you have like multiple iPhones like me so that you can test your app on different devices, then you're going to want this feature because it's going to make it super simple to push the app to your iPad or your other sized iPhones. All right, so that's how to get started. I hope this was useful. If you've enjoyed this part of lesson one, let me know. Let me know if there are any other issues that you've run into in getting this set up. Again, try my tricks of quitting Xcode, opening it up again, and seeing if you can get your developer certificate set up within Xcode preferences. You should be able to get your account working just using a normal developer ID that's just your Apple ID. It's not actually a paid developer account. This is a new change that they've made this past year where anyone can make apps and you don't need to pay money to get started. You can test your apps on your own devices. It's super helpful. And then when you're ready to submit to the App Store or you want to take advantage of certain services that are in the cloud, then you can pay for the Apple ID, but you don't need that paid developer account right now. You can just start for free. Hey, this is Paul. Real quick before you go, I've got all the source code over here on the right. If you want to download the source code, go to the link that's over on the right or down below. You can grab that code. If you like that, click the like button. Also, before you go, once you go to this site, you'll see a little form. If you fill that out, type your email address in here and click the download now button. That's going to send you an email with all the source code. So just check your email in order to get started. All right, so this has got a lot of design resources from Sketch to PNGs to Xcode projects. It's going to be very useful. Lastly, click the subscribe button, which is over my head. If you want to get updates when I have new videos, I'm going to be posting regular content on a weekly basis. And then last but not least, just like this video if you found any of the topics that I talked about helpful. I'm going to be showing you the next step in the next video. So let's go do that.